because I know what happens afterwards, and I was so hoping they were going to do it this season because of how long they waited to do this season. Mm -hmm. Now, now they probably won't be doing any. They won't be working on it because of this virus. I'm pretty sure it's affected Japan, so they're probably going to be not working for a bit. Mm Hmm. And we're live for episode. Sorry, Japan is uh, keeping the Olympics going, so I don't know how how many businesses they're shutting down. They are? Yeah, they're still holding the Olympics there. Huh, maybe they'll be the one to solve this 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 problem. But um episode 16 of the podcast and we're now dealing with the climax and the ending of the fight versus with Deku versus uh, Gentle uh, mm-hmm. I think one I, like, last week we talked about how I was like there's not that many fights with Deku by himself I'm thinking about use of the whole muscular fight uh, I think I think mainly I didn't classify that as by himself because he still had the kid there who helped them out in the in the end? Um, mm-hmm. so technically speaking, it doesn't count. But also on a technicality level, he definitely did fight him by himself. Coda just sprayed him with water, just mm-hmm. peed on him a little bit. <laughs> Wait, what? Coda's water power. He basically peed on him a little bit. Oh yeah, it was more like a distraction than anything. Uh, but technically, Deku didn't fight him by himself. The kid was still there. But uh, no, he pretty much fought him by himself. Move, like going on to what's currently happening now. Uh, I don't know what I could say. I had to get my thoughts together for this fight, but um, this was definitely an interesting fight. Uh, definitely showed Deku is learning. Um, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to muscular for a minute. I know that Coda actually did something at one point, and it's it feels like it should count as help. But through most of the fight, Coda was pure liability for Go, for Deku, and I don't think Co- I don't think Coda's presence there made Deku have some kind of advantage against Coda. Like, yes, he helped him once, bailed him out a little bit, but I think Deku was spending so much of his energy protecting Coda that Coda was more of a disadvantage to Deku than an advantage. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just, I'm just not seeing it as, in my brain, didn't process it as Cuddle was being like a, a help. This is the Deku didn't really fight him in te- te- technicality as at all. He really wasn't by himself when he fought him. He definitely fought and won by himself. But that's like saying that All Might wasn't really doing a one-on-one against, um, one for all, all for one because All for One took shots at innocent bystanders and. All Might had to throw himself in the way, and All Might, like, had the innocent bystanders in there and had to take them into consideration when using his fed power, so he was still holding back. I get all of it. My brain wasn't really processing it. I I get that, but my brain wasn't really processing that fight after it all Mm -hmm. as, like, I I think what I really wanted was, like, Mm -hmm. to me, it seemed like Deku was legitimately in trouble. At least here, he didn't seem to be in trouble. Not in the slightest. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was in trouble at all with Gentle. Granted, Gentle wasn't as powerful as um, Muscular, but at the same time, it was just like, I don't know, my brain didn't process that fight. I think it processed it, it, processed it in different ways, and I forgot all about the fight with Muscular, as cool as that fight was. Um, I, I just think, like, uh, I guess the, 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 um, the timing, the, 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 like the, the time limit, at least how much time had passed from that fight to now was a lot of time. A lot of mm-hmm. stuff has happened. Deku hasn't really had many fights by himself. Um, and I think one of my biggest problems is that Deku doesn't really fight a lot by himself. And the times he does fight by himself don't really... I don't remember, I don't remember them that well. And it's not because they're bad. Mm-hmm. They're just like... They're not like... They're not, they're not like fights like all for like all my fights or like... Shoot, even like uh, when Endeavor is around, fights that he's been into... She even fights with the other characters. Deku's fights, like, which is weird considering that he's the main character. He also has All Might's power. 
You think fights <clears throat> with him involved be a little bit more spectacular than they've been. But also, I understand that he's still a hero in training, so he isn't going to have all the spectacular power that All Might has, but my brain is like processing things differently in, in different spectrums of the, of the show. Mm-hmm. The, I think this is one of those fights where like, I wish Deku fought more or got more screen time than he's gotten in these recent you know, arcs and whatnot. He's been in there, and he's done the final fight. Um, he's pretty much gotten the main character treatment. You know, he 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 he's only important um during the last portion of the arc, versus him being important throughout. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like where my I guess where my whole process is going with that. Like, yeah, Dick who's fought by himself quite a bit. He's done one on one fights before. Um, I just think they just they haven't had as much impact as a fight like like Kirishima. At least for me, haven't had that much impact like Kirishima's fights. Um, I feel like Kirishima grew a lot in his interactions with certain people. I think Baraka's grew in certain interactions. I think Bakugo's grown a lot in certain interactions. I don't think Deku's fights really... I don't think Deku grew as much as most characters like have throughout the show. Mm-hmm. I think that's my biggest problem with Deku as a character. That he hasn't grown? A lot. I'm not saying he hasn't grown, but he hasn't grown a lot. Like, uh, as far as I can tell, he hasn't really learned a lot. Well, he's learned how to use his feet. He's learned how to control his power multiple times better than he originally did. He's learning how to predict his enemy's movements, um, which he learned from... He was predicting... In this fight today, he was working on predicting his enemy's movements, which he learned from um, All Might's sidekick. He's learned how to um, do aerial like jumps and things like that, which he learned from uh, what's that guy's name? Gran Torino. He's um, he's strategizing much better than he used to. He uh, is still the Deku that we love, which I was really glad to see, like Deku coming out and inspiring somebody, and like again, like being the person that changes people through his heroism, and that guy like just being like, you know what, like. I respect you, you know what I mean? And and giving him like that little moment at the end where he's just like, you know, out of respect, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was really cool. But Deku didn't have a lot that he needed to change, did he? I I think he could still be improved. It's um it's funny, I can't really point it out, but it's like there are certain issues that I think Deku still presents. And I'm not saying he hasn't mm-hmm. grown, I'm just saying he hasn't grown a lot compared to mm-hmm. Most other characters, they've gone through full, almost, character shifts. Deku's kind of stayed the same practically throughout. The only thing that's really changed is how he's, like you said before, how he's used his power. He's and that, confident now. Nah, I think that's just a, that was a phase. No, like I mean, he's, he he's definitely cried less. He was like, when the guy knocked him down, he got up and he's like, I fought better than you. Well, because the gentle isn't that much, which is not really much of a threat. I mean, he didn't, know, he, he, just, he didn't, he didn't become dangerous until like until the love power up. Yeah, but what a cool like line! Like I fought better than you. I mean, actually, he gave him. He said, "I fought better than you." I think after the love power up. Honestly, I think knowing Dickless person now, that was just more of trying to get him to engage in a fight because. La Brava even pointed out the last entire episode that, um, with what he, well, he would what he, like the type to say something not true. For any I'm, reason. Not, I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm not saying that he that wasn't true. What I'm saying, like judging given his character, I think considering that we said this before that Gentle is the master escape artist. Deku had a hard time just trying to pin him down. Like mm-hmm. no matter what he did. I mean, Deku literally had to um, utilize membrane where the, where the rubber membranes were in the air to even hit him, using his own power against him. But I think it was more of Gentle try- he trying to get Gentle to attack, because Gentle wasn't attacking. He was just trying to get away. And okay. uh, and according to Lebrava, getting getting away is actually most of his personality. He doesn't like to fight. He's even stated it right. the entire time. He doesn't like to fight. Um. Mm. I think more of him, I think that was more of Deku trying to antagonize him into a fight. Because Gentle was mm-hmm. literally trying to get away. It wasn't really until near the end, even with the love power up, where, where Gentle even decided to engage in close combat. 
And on top of that, they even learned that, you know, their love power up was nothing compared to Deku's 8% that Deku's using. I don't think Deku's even commenting on how much he's even using right now, actually. Can he use a maximum of 30%? No, he can only use it at 20%. Hmm. He even stated this when, well, I'm asking why, um, that's why Deku's trying to do projectiles. He can only use up to 20%, and that's by force. Right. He can only do it for like five seconds or whatever the, the limit is. He said for a little bit of time, he can't do it for a long time. He's probably not even using A, to be honest with you, because these people are, aren't even bruised or scratched. Well, or the, thing, well the thing is, the, the difference between 5% and 8% isn't a lot. So honestly, in my opinion, if Deku's trying to get his body to get used to using all, all for one, one for all, damn, keep missing that up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep missing that to the end of this freaking show. But um, I got one for all. Honestly, he, honestly, I'm sitting there saying he's using eight percent. There's no way he's not using um, there's no way he's not using eight percent. You can make an argument really? using five percent, but the difference, the difference between eight percent and five percent is so negligible that I don't honestly think he probably would have jumped up to eight percent. So he needs to get his body used to um, going uh, going further, uh, up in the percentage in the percentile. Twenty percent is what he needs to aim for. So he doesn't blow buildings up, but I honestly, mm-hmm. if he's if he's aiming for that, then he needs to be able to use eight percent and gradually go up in percentage, at least between now and twenty percent. He needs to at least be able to use fifteen. Mm-hmm. But like I say, like what I'm saying, there's really no no physical proof that he's using eight percent. But I, I, the only thing I would say is that because there's such a negligible difference between eight and eight and five. I mm-hmm. would if I was him. I would use a. I would use eight percent because there's no point in not using it. Right. Like, that's like it's like no point because like I mean he fought Bakugo. He even said in that fight with him that eight percent is not that much of an increase. Well, it's a sixty sixty percent increase. To go from five to eight is an increase by of sixty percent. Are you there? You're still here. No, I'm just thinking. It's not a lot compared to the hundred percent that he could be, but from where he is to where he's going, it's sixty percent. Like that's a lot. But he said it's still negligible. It didn't it didn't really help him in the long in the long run? No, but I don't think he would want to hurt this guy. And we know that he even subconsciously holds back sometimes when he's fighting a uh, a human being. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to kill somebody, and he kind of like. Without even meaning to, he doesn't use his full power. We saw that in the early series, like series one. Yeah, but all my he's like twenty percent. He's not killing anybody. Yeah, but he's not fighting like what is physically just kind of an old guy, middle aged man either. What about all for one? He wasn't using twenty percent on all for one. Plus, all for one has quirks that make him more durable. Like this guy doesn't. This guy seems to have basic human durability. I don't know. I just. I don't think. I mean, there's a case for him using five percent, but at the same time, like if if all if, if Deku's goal is to gradually go up, regardless of how minimum of a of a threat this guy is, in my in my. Honest opinion, I would use eight percent. Just so my body can you, you get used to it, so eight percent becomes my new five percent. But just no. Deku, Deku takes his fight so seriously. I don't think he'd be trying to like also train while he was doing. I think he'd just be there to win. He was definitely Counting training like, how to use the projectile thing because he didn't get a chance to use the gloves. Before that, but he wasn't training no, during the fight itself. No, I think he was training during the fight mainly because he was using. He didn't get a chance to use the gloves during the training thing, or did he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he got the gloves and immediately ran out. Well, I feel like this is more of a test in practice. I mean, he didn't know if he was going to be able to do this anyway. He was taking a mm-hmm. chance that he would be able to do it. And learn that he could. But, um... Like, I don't... Like I said, like I mean, yeah, he could be he could be using five percent, but at the same time, I just feel like if he is really trying to get his body used to it, I mean, training or not, um, 
uh, gentle was trying to get away, and I don't even know if five percent would have been would have been enough to catch him. Like, it, it, mm-hmm. granted, it took trickery to catch him in the first place, but like I said, I don't I don't know if like it, like if he was using eight percent or five percent. It is in my opinion. I feel like he should be using eight percent if he wasn't, just so he can get used to it. I mean, like mm-hmm. it's not like he wasn't used to it, but like I said, he doesn't use he doesn't even say percentages anymore. Um, when he's just when he's just using um full cowling, I think that's just writing, and they don't want to keep writing that. They don't want to keep writing <laughs> the percentage as he's attacking, which makes sense. But um, yeah. But I mean, his attacks have been freaking long to begin with. Kind of like full cowling shoot style, like that. That that, that like. I always realized that was gonna be a, that was always gonna be a problem when he was like fighting, like like all my attacks are short and simple. They they get the point across. You don't have to you don't have to sit there and contemplate. Wait, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Ah, my leg. Also, all Might's approach to life is kind of direct and simple too. Like all Might doesn't. I mean, he's very complicated and as a human, but when he's in hero mode, he's going to straight at you. I've never seen all Might do anything especially tricky. Um, but Deku is always like Deku's like grew up as an underdog and he's always like trying to find creative and tricky ways to work around things to get to his enemy. And like, I don't, I can't think of very many fights except possibly the muscular one where Deku is one with anything resembling brute force. Muscular seemed like pretty much a full brute force fight. And that was it. Although even then he saved his legs so that he wouldn't, um, he'd have something to get away on. I'm all like to point out uh, with All Might, the one with All for One, his last final battle, he mm-hmm. won that through trickery. I don't disagree, but I can't remember. What was the part where he went through trickery? When he was already in his deflated mode, his um and he could only inflate an arm. Uh he went he would punch he would punch with that arm. But the moment mm-hmm. that it was about to make contact, it would switch the arm that his power was in and swing with the other one. He pretty much he simply did that. He simply did that in the in the part two of the fight. So that's yeah. how that's how he won. That's how he won that fight in the first place. I'll give you I'll give you partial credit for that. He still was just directly in front of this guy punching him, but he found a smarter way to punch. That's all Deku's doing is punching, and flicking his finger. But still, he, that's all. He, that's all Deku's doing is punching. That's all his. No, was, that's he, all his quirk can do. He was jumping and using the invisible platform to see where they were. He was sliding to the side and shooting underneath them, like by like coming to the side and bypassing his his uh, quirk. He was. He's had other fights where he's done things like he's used his he's used his quirk on the wall. Or I the get that, but at the same time, who's to say you know, that in front of him? I get all that, but who's to say that All Might didn't do that when he was fighting? We haven't seen all the fights. We haven't seen all the fights that he's been in. No, we haven't. But I mean, All Might didn't like All Might didn't really find a brilliant ways to do things when he was the underdog because All Might was pretty weak through most of the fights that we saw him in because his power was fading and. What we see is even with his power fading, he just kind of came in head first and just hoped he could punch them enough times before he ran out of energy. He didn't do anything like super clever, but with Deku, we've seen things where like Deku's had like one finger left and still been able to do something about it. Or, you know what I mean? Like he's been, he's had nothing but his feet and he can do something like Deku's been in highly compromised positions and he's always able to find like some clever way through it, like through resourcefulness. All Might's fighting style was was a lot of stand in front of them and punch. And yes, he did have that one fight where he found a more clever way to punch than before. And I'm not saying that's not strategic, but it's not the level of resourcefulness that I feel like Deku demonstrates in every single one of his fights just about. Except, I think, Muscular, where like he really didn't... It wasn't an especially... It was a very heroic fight, but it wasn't something I would say is defined it as being highly resourceful and creative. I still think... I still think you're giving Deku too much credit to some extent, because, like, all his power, and this is, like, what I'm just looking at. I'm just looking at one for all, just flat out, plain and simple. Anything that Deku's done, I'm not going to say that he hasn't thought his way, he hasn't thought his way through it. 
I still feel like mm-hmm. Deku's just done things with more creative punches and more creative flair. Because all all Deku's ability really and truly is, he even named his superpower. Mm-hmm. Granted, he only did that because he wanted to keep that hidden. But still, mm-hmm. all all that power is really just power. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. It's nothing like. It's nothing like Uraraka's power. It's nothing like De- like Bakugo's power. But then mm-hmm. again, you know, I also gotta give. I also gotta give the fact that Deku is still learning. Um. For right mm-hmm. now, so we don't know what all of that power can do. If we don't even know, there's things that he can do that All Might can't do. But um, and another thing too, the whole fact that you know, you know, we never, you never seen All Might do anything creative with his power. Like nowadays, like when we have seen him fight, like he, like you said, he had a time limit. He couldn't just like be clever because clever takes timing, and uh, there's no way you're always gonna get somebody in one shot, regardless if you're a pro or, or a newbie. Like there's no guarantee. There's you can no- say that, but we had we saw Deku in fights where he had a sort of time limit too because he, the pressure was on and he knew that every time time he was going to punch his bones were going to shatter. But he always found something. He always used well, the though- psychology he- of the person he was fighting in, in, into consideration. He always used like this the his environment to his advantage. He, you know what I mean. He was very resourceful in all those kind of situations. He was always taking everything into consideration. But the thing is, with that time limit, Deku had control for that time limit. All Might didn't. And to All Might's credit, like as far as like taking the enemy into consideration, he mostly fought mindless or blunt force enemies. Like when he fought a Nomu or when he fought the slime monster, like they were both fairly like, fairly mindless beasts. When he fought um, All for One, it was going to it was clear that it was like a to the, to the death fight. So there wasn't a lot of like reverse psychology or changing your opponent to see the lighter side of things going on in that situation i don't know i just felt like there was just like you know i'm not saying that deku isn't a cool character and a great hero at the same time like i feel i still feel like considering that from all the stuff that i've watched and i'm and it's probably my detriment that i'm comparing it to a lot of stuff that i watched when i'm comparing him to other main characters and other main heroes um mm-hmm. other main characters most of i watched like, I still feel like he's not as creative, or he's not as not as smart. He's supposed to be the smartest character in, in my hero, next to Bakugo and a couple other characters who are very analytical. But like, I feel like he still could have been way more creative with a power that's just nothing more than punching. Mm-hmm. Like you would think. Now, granted, yes, we've seen Deku do some things. Such as he's he's learned that he can when he's using one hundred percent, he can kick the air and start flying. But apparently, he could do that when he's at twenty percent. Which is even stranger to me, but at the same time, um, his power is still basically just stripping of his limbs. I feel like, 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 uh, um, a lot of stuff that he's learned should have been things that, and now I'm not him. I don't know what situation he's in or like how his mind thinks when he's getting sick. But some of these things, such as kicking, mm-hmm. that's such like a, I, I don't care if you're idolizing a superhero and you gain a power similar to them. You would think if you're trying to be a hero and you're trying to compete, this person that you're idolizing is going to be a is going to be a rival. So you should be trying to figure out how to compete with this with this already pro hero. Like you should be thinking, what can I do that makes me much more different than him? So kicking, as interesting and as memeable as that is, because people do meme the fact that Deku's learned how to kick. Um. You have memed the meme that mean up to like hell and back at this point. It's kind of weird, but um, same times like that's still really not that much of intelligence because like you can just as easily kick as you can punch. And the only reason why kicking Deku is a, kicking is a more powerful but slower attack. But at the same time, like that should have been something you been should have been considering. It shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have taken. And this is really what it really comes all down to for me. It should have taken a random outside mechanic bringing up that if you break your arms, just use your legs to another character, and that suddenly lights your brain brain up to the fact like, oh, that's right, I got legs. Like that that shouldn't have that that, that shouldn't mm-hmm. taken that long. He discovered that he can do this in season three. Have you ever taken any martial arts courses? No, and that's what I'm saying. I'm all, all I'm gonna say is that I don't know, I don't know truly the situation he was in or what his brain was doing. At the same time, it's just like to me, it's like 
Yeah. And I'm no, so I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really wrestling. Anybody, right. anybody, a two year old can punch and, and punch fairly effectively. Like anybody without training at, at any point in life, if they can move, they can punch. Kicking is hard because kicking moves your center of balance from two feet to one. And it requires a lot of balance and coordination and to kick effectively beyond like kicking someone in the shin or the knee or something like that takes a lot of practice and training. So his ability to move to a point where he could start kicking and doing things like that more effectively and the acrobatics and things like that, that you're starting to see him more commonly used than when he first started and he was just punching and, and running is signs of him growing in experience as a more professional hero. Like his moves are becoming more sophisticated. He's jumping and dodging and, and bobbing and weaving and strategizing his moves and anticipating his opponents like move, ac attacks and his kicks. He's kicking and not just punching. And like, I think he has a couple points he even does things like handstands, doesn't he? Like that's all like learned things. Like when he first started out, he was super basic and he was mostly just punching and running. No, what I'm getting, what I'm getting is, I'm not saying that I already know that well, there are fighting mm -hmm. styles that specifically use your legs. I already know how hard that is. I yeah. see. I think it's freaking cool whenever a, a character can utilize their feet. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting at is the fact that even in street boxing, kicking is something that people do. Not street boxing, street fighting is something kicking is something that people do and is used commonly. Deku didn't even try to even do a poor kick. Like yeah. I mean, like he didn't try kicking at all. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. It's like it's it's one thing to adapt mm. a fighting style with your feet, but it's another thing when you didn't okay. even try to kick in the first place. So let's also consider this: if Deku, Deku at that point, every time he used his ability, he was badly injuring himself and very often having his bone shatter. If Deku had kicked and had his bone shatter, he would be much more out of the fight than having his arms and hands shattered. I like to bring up the fact he's broken his legs before. And he's been breaking them up to this point without much of a qualm because he knew that Recovery Girl could help him. And regardless fight, of yeah. like regardless of like the uh him but thinking by the, by the time Reco oh, Recovery Girl, not uh not the Horn Girl. Okay. Horn Girl, you talk what? Never mind, I was being stupid. Go ahead. Proceed. I don't know where, like, uh, all, all, like, I guess at the end of the day, is like he, he didn't have too many qualms with breaking limbs up to the point that the doctor told him that he should be, he should probably start breaking his fingers. Mm -hmm. In my honest opinion, I already know how hard it is to learn how to kick effectively. At the same time, I feel like if, like, if the whole point was like that, like, you know, Deku, we see Deku getting better with his kicks. I honestly felt like, to me, if they really wanted to get that pro um, point across, they should have been having Deku um, use his feet, besides jumping, besides for jumping around and running around, like, maybe he do a kick or two, him realizing that maybe, like, maybe him doing it subconsciously, maybe him not realizing that his kicks are a little bit, his, strong, his legs are a little bit strong in his arms, subconsciously, I feel like him coming to that realization would have made a lot more sense and meant a lot more, if it wasn't for the fact that when it dawned on him, it dawned on him when a outside character who had really nothing much more to do with him other than him, her being involved in the in the tournament beforehand, mm -hmm. bringing up the fact that if you're breaking your arms, just use your legs, like yeah. And it, it on top of that, like her trying to help out Ida is what really made it dawn on him in the first place because he saw that he saw he had that moment in all the fights he had in his head. It literally took. Him realizing that maybe he should use his legs. Now, I'm not sitting there saying that this realization was bad. Well, actually, I guess I am. Like, I'm not saying it's that bad, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think he's had enough growth for me, for me personally. I like him as a character, but like, when I, when I compare his growth to other characters, I feel like to me, now granted, I keep on saying this before, Deku was t still learning. The other characters already know what they're what the quirks can already do up to their current limit. They're, they're, they're mm -hmm. still learning what their quirks can do, but they're learning more advanced techniques. Deku is still learning think, how to kick. Do you think a good character needs to learn and grow? 
for a, a, in my opinion, a, 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 a progressively good character, yes. So if, is, Goku, it, is Goku a bad character? Yes and no. He, he's only bad. He, he's only bad in Dragon Ball Z because he's already he's already like essentially made it up to his max capability of learning. He's only that's just not true. He's like millions of times, literally millions of times more in the end of the series than he was at the beginning. He has new techniques and he becomes a Super Saiyan. Um, but his personality doesn't change. I disagree with that. Not the personality thing, but like, I think Goku, the you call those Super Saiyan things him learning. I call those just random power ups in the middle of everything because there's really no explanation towards about the fusion technique. That was more of a gag, and the creator even can the spirit bomb. Okay, let me phrase what I'm saying. Then he, I think he learned everything he possibly could learn by the end of Z. I was thinking about he, he he grew as a character in Dragon Ball. The original series where he came from, he was learning there. You know, learning every day things, learning learning how to fight. Character in Dragon Ball. Hmm? But who, outside of a fight, he didn't grow really from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball. He was still pretty much that like kid, little kid that loved food and was fearless and stuff like that, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, personality change. I just like honestly, I just felt like. And Dragon Ball is a whole different situation too. Like Dragon Ball is my first anime, so I'm not gonna be that critical of it anyway. That's just that's just biased. But um, is Bulma a bad character? She basically doesn't change ever. Well, what do you mean change? Do do do, do you mean does metaphorically or or physically? Dragon Ball, does Bulma change as a character from bad dra- anywhere from Dragon? I mean, yeah, she. I mean, she went from being a spoiled brat to being, being a responsible a resp- old person. No, I don't think she's spoiled in Dragon Ball Z. She just like has. She just has the world blown up around her. Literally, that's not even a metaphor. That's literally. I think you'd be that upset um, and cranky too, if you have the world literally used, blowing up around you. In Dragon Ball Super, she used the Dragon Balls to wish that she was five years younger. So did Frieza. Okay, well, we're... I mean, that's like... That opens up a huge can of worms. But if we're talking about spoiled behavior, she collected the Dragon Balls. She had a wish for anything she could have. World peace, the end of cancer, anything. And she wished to be five years younger. Oh, you talking about opening a can of worms. That's just human behavior, man. I don't, I don't care little, who... You, I don't care spoiled. who you... I don't care who you are. If you mm-hmm. literally were told that a giant lizard could grant you any wish in the world, mm-hmm. world peace, the cure for cancer, none of that would be the first thing on your mind. I don't care who you are. And if you said that, it would be your first thought. You are a liar. And I mean that. Is, is, is it first thought or not? It's, it's, I think there's at least some people that would actually wish for something like a cure for cancer. I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. I don't know, dude. I mean, and, I'm, nobody and that and, and, and that might be me cancer. being cynical. Everybody in the world that might be me being cynical. Wish. The cure for cancer would never come up, but something like looking five years would. Humans are a selfish race. Dude, and it's pretty, it's pretty spoiled behavior to decide to opt to hunt down the dragon gather them together, and wish to be five years younger. That is spoiled behavior. I mean, who wouldn't be arguing with a spoiled behavior she'd grab the Dragon Balls and Dragon Ball just to get a boyfriend? Because she couldn't find one. Yeah. I mean, if you want to make an argument, I don't know if you, if you were trying to make an argument for spoiled behavior, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use I, the latest Jeremy, example. I hate, to do this. I hate to do this to you, but I need a five minute break, okay? I'll be right back. Grayson's been crying for like five straight minutes. Jesse must not hear it or she's sleeping through it. But I need to calm him down for a minute. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. Sorry.
I'm going to be on recess. Let me just turn on some music. Hopefully, I won't get copyright claim for this. Definitely going to need some music. Um, one minute as I uh, turn this on. All right, I guess the animation didn't last too long. I'm here. Okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess it was me ranting about how bad humanity is, but um, moving on. I think that I think your statement that nobody would ask for something altruistic is a little bit crazy. Well, forgive me for living in this world for 29 years and seeing how messed up humanity is. At least. Americans, so like for mm -hmm. me to have like, I'm not gonna get into how I feel about the state of America right now or anything like that. But it's like I've, I've just lost faith in humanity. I really have, and maybe that's me. Maybe that's me. Maybe that's too like cynical uh, sort of me. Maybe I should have a better outlook on humanity. But like to me, 
I think humanity is uh, just like we're all selfish. We, you know, like, and we may think you know of altruistic things and stuff like that, but I don't think, like, because if you ask a little kid and like if you ask a little kid something, they're gonna think about something that they want, and you know, regardless of they, them knowing better, that's that's they're gonna be in me at first. They're not gonna think about like a uh, world peace or something like that, like. And and they're like the the little kids are like pure to a certain point, you know. And it's just one of those things like, would I would I like a cure for cancer? Yeah, I only only thought I really thought about that because recently I had family members that passed to it. Like I didn't think too much about cancer until it affected me. Mm-hmm. So that's that's even a selfish thought, in, in among itself. I mean, and, and, yeah. and, and it's not all selfish. You know, I want there to be a cure of cancer. Like, people don't have to go through losing a family member to it. But like I said, that's kind of like why, in my opinion, I don't think anybody in America, I mean, in the world, and I want someone to prove me wrong. But at the same time, it's like, to me, it's like, you got this risk, wish granting thing that disappears after you grant, after it grants you in the, in the new continuity, two wishes. And then it disappears and you can't find it again. Mm-hmm. I highlighted that the first thing you're gonna think is I want world peace and a cure for cancer. Now, granted, in Boma's case, uh, she managed to make a radar to find these things. So at the same time, I think that cancels out her. I think it cancels out any real defendment, any any definitive thing I could say about her because she had the ability to grab the the dragon every year as she wanted to, but she didn't. Mm-hmm. At the same time, like for her though, in the whole one to be five years younger, if I you just ha- think that like if you, if you well, take this, what does it mean? Can, can I, I just want to finish the statement before you continue, so I don't lose it. But in in, okay. in defending her a little bit, she's married. Well, not married. She's technically the wife of an alien who doesn't age. So I don't think it's that too spoiled to want to look five years younger. That's just me. Yeah. Carry on. Her first wish in Dragon Ball was for a boyfriend. Her last wish in Super was to look five years younger. I just don't see a big leap. Also, you got to point out, too, she never got those wishes. Well, the boyfriend yeah, thing, she kind of got the Yamcha. But she didn't get, she didn't get the, she didn't get the, I'm like the, uh, she didn't get that last wish, the one wishing five years younger, because Freezer wanted that too, but she didn't get it. Oh, I thought she got it, and Freezer was gonna wish for the same thing. No, I don't think. Um, I want to say that something else happened to the dragon, but I'm almost certain that they didn't. She didn't get that wish. You can look that up, but I don't think she got that wish. Mm. On top of that, Bowman doesn't well, look that old to begin with. Point, but what she wanted in both cases was very, very similar. Most people it who like a, it almost seemed like a callback. It probably was, but the, the thing is, for me, you, you compare that wish to other wishes that people wanted, and like I don't even think it's really that selfish, compar- comparatively to wanting to roll the universe. Vegeta wanted immortality, but crying out loud, like comparatively, so that what she would have was a drop in the bucket. She just she just wanted to look a couple years younger, so she didn't look that much older than her husband. Yeah. If Frieza, I, I, the only reason he wanted to, I guess, he wanted to look taller, actually. That's what, that's what he was. Yeah, he wanted to be, like, a, a three inches taller or something like that. Five inches taller. Okay, so... I think the point I was making is that Bulma seems like a fairly flat character. And her priorities, and I mean, I don't know what's more spo- spoiled than somebody like on a cruise ship having a gigantic like band and fifty five chef, a thousand chefs like cooking every possible dish imaginable just for a birthday party. Um. So I don't know. It just seems like if she's a flat character, but I don't think she's a bad character. And I think Goku, at his core, is a flat character, but he's not a bad character. You can have a good character that's not necessarily a bad character. Uh, take from the movie. Have you ever watched the animated series Gargoyles? 
Um, I think I saw an episode or two. I don't remember it that well. Goliath from Gargoyles, Optimus Prime from Transformers. What? You, you, you cut off there what you're saying? Goliath from Gargoyles, Optimus Prime from Transformers. They're all flat characters. But they're great characters, too. Well, I'm looking at them from the time period that they came from, and like, I, I'm just I'm just saying that I I want more a Deku because he's not, he's not the same as Goku, Naruto, because um, mm-hmm. like he's intelligent, and like I mean, and forgive me for calling Goku an idiot, but he is an idiot. He's only really super intelligent when he's fighting. When he isn't fighting, the guy is like dumber than a sack of bricks. On uh, Naruto, on the other hand, he the thing with him too, he's stupid because he 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 has some he has some issues of his own that like are a little bit more like mm-hmm. less um was she stop texting me for crying out loud? Jesus. How about how about Linus from Peanuts? Who from who what? Did you ever watch Snoopy cartoons? Snoopy? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. I just don't remember that well. Oh, you mean the kid with the blanket? Yeah. Linus is a is a constant in that series, and like he knows exactly who he is and what he is, and he's kind of and because he does not change, things change around him. So in the case of Midoriya, like Midoriya sometimes the story is that he is so convinced about who he is that like he will do the illogical thing when he runs towards the slime monster. He's like, I'm going to do the heroic thing. That is something about my change. And he throws himself into the slime monster and selflessly tries to save Bakugo or when he, um, that's like this heroic selfless thing. And that's what changes people when he fights off muscular and he doesn't care how overwhelmed he is. That changes the little kid that tries that sticks up for him when he like was like basically saying screw every single person in the world and kick him in the balls like a day before or an hour before um he changes people because he does not change like people see him holding it like when they're like look i've seen the future and you die here and he goes well screw the future i'm gonna go and fight anyway like he inspires people because he is so committed to who he is and so like ingrained in, in the that heroic core that he has that it's almost like he's there to juxtapose against the other characters and like when they see him and they see what he's like they're like i want to be more like that and everybody bends towards what he is as opposed to him evolving i think he does do some of all evolution but the problem is that he's got that core that like is the appeal of this character i think in a lot of reasons so I don't think that just arbitrarily saying, well, be evolving as a character is necessarily the most effective use of that character in the same way that it isn't for other people. Like Jiminy Cricket, like is a voice of morality. You know what I mean? There's like certain characters that like by being who they are, they're inspiring or like legendary because of that. And there's other characters that are inspiring and legendary because they didn't change. Like, yeah, well, here's um, the, well, here's the thing with this like, that I have. Martin Luther King, what if Martin Luther King was a fictional character instead of a real character, it would be very difficult to criticize him for not evolving because he already had things figured out. And that's the very essence of what made him inspiring. People still criticize that man. I mean, a lot of the criticism I heard that he wasn't, he wasn't truly fighting for freedom. I disagree with that. But, you but there are people who argue that him as a bad character if he was a fictional character. You wouldn't say that's a bad character. You'd say that's I'm not. I'm not saying Deck was a bad character. I, I'm just saying. I'm just sitting here saying that for me, when I'm comparing mm-hmm. into other characters, a lot of like what you know, what made Goku work, what made Naruto work, or mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it's because they were stupid. Like, they were ignorant. They didn't know any better. Deku is not that way. He's not stupid. Mm-hmm. He isn't ignorant. Deku is portrayed to be a really intelligent character. Mm-hmm. You can't you can even make the argument for Vash. Vash, I don't even think he was really that stupid. Like, but like, I think well, for Vash him, wasn't stupid at all. Vash was the most intelligent character in that series. But I think it worked differently for him because of the the world that he was in. For me, I think Deku, mm-hmm. Deku for for one has been portrayed from the get go as like a character who was rational, 
and stuff like that. You know, I mean, he had the, he had that moment in the first episode where he ran and, mm-hmm. and ran into an irrational fight. I will give mm-hmm. you that. But I feel like Deku, because he's supposed to be intelligent, he's supposed to technically change and evolve and get better. Like mm-hmm. I care like Goku, he didn't have to worry about that because Goku was stupid. You know, a lot of the way he won won the day was just by being be, being who he was. I don't think Deku was a hundred percent being who he's supposed to be because mm-hmm. of, of the I guess of the preconceived notion that I got from day one. And maybe that's what it is. I had this preconceived notion of Deku from day one. He's supposed to be this intelligent character, but he's being he's being Goku. He's being Naruto. He's being Ichigo. He's being all these characters. I guess at the end of the day, it's like I really wanted something different. Like I don't I don't want I, I, I don't want in every show that I watch to be fully be this main character who who is dumb or something like that, you know, who doesn't think a lot, you know, I want them to be able to, and I guess it's like why shows like don't last long if the character is like that. I've seen characters, I've seen shows with characters the, the way I like them, but they don't last that long. You know, it, it, it takes a character who doesn't think a lot for a show to, to last. And I don't have a problem with those characters, but I, I, I get tired of those characters after a while. Like I want a character to be an analytical. I want them to, do this and that, and not saying Dick isn't that way, but he hasn't been. He hasn't been doing a lot of that recently. Like this fight right here was probably the closest he's done that in in, in a while. Like you criticized the muscular fight because it's it was all him being brute force, and I agree with you mm-hmm. with that one. He wasn't really, he wasn't the Deku that I was used to. You know, I he wasn't he wasn't the main reason. Deku drew me to this show because he was supposed to be. A different main character. He was this way all the way up until like after the tournament, and then it kind of went out the window. Granted, it went out the window because he needs to learn how to use his power. But at the same time, like to me, it's like I I don't want him to be Goku. I don't want him to be. I want him to be him. I don't want him to like. I don't want what essentially mm-hmm. is what happens to a lot of these main characters is that they become a Goku clone. Mm-hmm. And so for what me, we have that's seen in this last episode was a cool turnaround. Like he I mean, did seem like he got back to his roots a little bit. Fighting. Yeah, but I don't know how long that's gonna last. And like, I I don't want to get invested in in something like this. And it just it's just one of those one one offs. It's like he he had to he had to be this way to to defeat uh-huh. this character. Like and like like I said before, for me, it's like when you ask the, when you ask when you ask the question of like. Does a character need to constantly evolve for them to be a, a good character? When a character, when a character is portrayed to be a uh, um, a critical thinker or something like that, he isn't portrayed to be a brick case, a you know, a just a, a brick wall that can't feed information to. Um, mm-hmm. when a character's like that, like Goku, for instance, like yeah, he doesn't have to change a lot if that's what his if that's what he, that's who he is like that's how you can write off a lot of things for certain characters like oh that's just the way he is he's stupid he wouldn't have gotten that but when you got someone like deku who's not only a student he's also portrayed to be a, a a book nerd you know he likes to analyze things a lot he doesn't like to I mean, like he doesn't like to brute force things a lot but when he starts brute forcing it you're wondering what's going on what happened to what happened to that like that like that spastiness of his his brain like whenever he got into a huge thought like he would start muttering to himself, and maybe mm. people didn't like that and maybe that's like I mean that's like one of the few things about Deku's character that's kind of changed over 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 the over the course of these episodes that people didn't like the muttering, people don't like Deku a lot because he cries. Well, he stopped that. A- he stopped, I don't mind that he stopped mutter- muttering, but like that they never explained why he did. It seemed like something that if he was going to stop muttering, that it would be. It was a really good reason, and I didn't hear any reason at all for him to stop muttering. It just kind of. I mean, a lot of people. I mean, I'm not sure how well you know this, but a lot of people don't like Deku as a character. It's actually, does um the fan base doesn't like Deku a lot. Um, mm-hmm. and one of the main reasons is because he's cry because he cries a lot. Granted, he hasn't done that a lot lately. Um, I think the closest he's gotten to crying recently was during the during his interaction with Miorio in the hospital. I bet I think that was like the closest. To, well, actually, no, did he was he crying when he was fighting with Ariel's back? No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He wasn't crying then. Like, like, yeah. Like the recent times, actually cried is just during his Miro interaction when he was talking to him. 
So he stopped crying. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind him not crying. I mean, I didn't, like, he doesn't have to cry. Like, like it is, it's one of those things. Like, I mean, he, that was another thing that made him different. Like, you know, he's technically, he was technically a little bit of a coward. And I guess from watching enough anime, I kind of want to see different types of main characters. There was a show, um, there was this show, I guess as we're winding down this one. There was this show called um, Hitman Reborn that I watched when I was in high school. Um, that's when I started realizing that I wanted different main characters because in this show, which is about like super powered, you know, mafia bosses and whatnot, um, there was this character called Suna. Uh, he essentially was um, told by, by a baby, a talking baby, uh, that he was going to be the next Vengola boss, like the, the mafia boss that he was supposed to be in charge with. Um, out of nowhere, he was told this, uh, cause he was supposed to be, this baby was supposed to be, this talking baby was supposed to be a tutor that his mother hired. Uh, yeah, his mother hired a baby tutor. Um, I would explain more about that, but I don't know if we're going to watch this together at some point, so I'm going to keep that, I'm going to keep as much as I can. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, compa- I'm just going to compare main character. Um, Suna was a coward. He wasn't that much of a fighter. Um, he had high mor he had morals, he had ethics. He only really fought for his friends, but he didn't like it. And he also didn't want to become the mafia boss. Um he was a different main character. He wasn't um he uh he was basically the main one different he was a coward. He didn't like fighting, he was uh he wasn't he was essentially they took, you know, the main character being bad at everything to a whole new level where he essentially stayed bad at everything. The only time he really became really, you know, B.A. was whenever he was in a fight for his friends. So, like, he had different parts of him that he, the only show when he was fighting. And, um, he was a very determined character. He was also a very analytical character. He, he saw things that other people didn't. And, um, it was one of those things where, like, it made me like him as a character a little bit more because he was different. He wasn't he wasn't Goku at the time. He wasn't Naruto, which was really popular at the time. A dim with a kid who just wanted to prove himself but didn't know how. You know, Suna was this way, but he was at least li- a little bit different. He wasn't a lot different, but he was a little bit different. And I was hoping that I was going to get what I wanted out of a different character from Deku. And for the most part, I had uh, up until recently. Um, he has returned to form in this fight with Gentle, but I don't know how, I don't know how much of that remains, uh, because in a way he's progressing, but he's progressing in not the way I want him to progress. He's not becoming, he's not becoming smarter. He's just kind of staying the same IQ wise. Um, but just like kind of being a shonen main character who just punches his way through obstacles. And it's kind of hard when your power is basically that to charge your limbs, but I don't know. I think we've seen people turn powers into incredible. This guy that can make things elastic and realize he could do it to the air, make sandwiches, and I don't know. He's done a tremendous amount of things with his power, and we've seen other people that kind of too with basic power like that's not doesn't seem that incredible, but then they've used it extremely resourcefully to do incredible things like i think somebody that can make force happen like deku should have figured out a way to fly by now with it you know what i mean by propelling himself through the air he's just now learned that he has a long range attack he's so there's a there's a scene where um do you know the flash are you familiar with dc's mythos at all uh yes. Cause I'm familiar. So there's, a scene, there's a scene with Reverse Flash, like Doctor Zoom, um, where he's fighting Doctor Zoom, and Doctor Zoom has him in a in a bind, like he has him like with the sticky stuff that's covered his body, and they have both covered in a bot and and this sticky stuff, and there's a bomb and it's about to take both of them out, and he's like, haha, I've got you now, Flash, and Flash so. Uh, Flash says something along the lines of, like, you know, you were never very creative about... We have the same powers, but you were never very creative with them. And he creates a bunch of static electricity by, like, moving his hands fast and throws the static electricity at the bomb and shorts it out. And then he's like, oh. (laughs) You know what I mean? And, like, he's stuck. But, like, 
that's how I feel about Deku sometimes. He's not very creative about using his powers. He's thinking I can punch hard and I can kick hard. And as soon as he like learned how to do stuff like that, he stopped really thinking about it. Like Deku should be able to create earthquakes. Deku should be able to like throw things. Deku should be able to like, he's just learned that he can use his air. Like for Christ's sake, he just learned that he can use his legs, which was your point earlier. Deku should be able to do all sorts of things with his power once he realizes that he can lift things in the air and shake things and, and do all those other things. Deku should, hasn't figured out yet that he can run super fast, which we've seen All, all Might do. All Might was by far the fastest when he ran over to um, All For Ones. They made the point, oh, you should have been here in like a split second, but it took you four. You know what I mean? You must be getting slow. Like, Deku hasn't even figured out that he can run super fast yet. Like, there's all these things that Deku can, should be have coupled into his power. You know what I mean? Incredible speed running, probably some sort of propel you through the air type flight, like earthquakes and, and projectiles and maybe like, I mean, if you can move super fast, as we've seen with the Flash, there should be other things you can do, run in circles and and All Might knows that he can change the weather with his weapon and, you know, when he, with his quirk and stuff like that. There's almost un, unfounded things that he should be able to do with his quirk that he's not thinking of, like, as far as using it creatively. So that's a waste. Well, here's the thing. I was more complaining about, like, like Deku as a... a not too much of his power progression, but I will say, like, as, as like, I ha- as, as I have problems with showing in jump main characters, a lot of what you're telling, what a lot of what you're asking for is, like, final form, end of the series types of things, like changing the weather, for instance. Deku will eventually get to that point. Um, but as, like, as for, like, the whole, like, the whole, like, projectile weapon thing, Deku couldn't even do that until you, unless he was using 20% of his power. I think All Might confirmed mm-hmm. that. Um, so a lot of like the hangups that Deku has are due to the fact he's incapable of using more than like 20% at, at, at best. Um, a lot of those problems get easily fixed if Deku were just to, you know, amp up how much of the power he's using. Um, as I said before, Deku's been subconsciously holding back half the time when he's fighting somebody because he doesn't want to kill anybody. But uh-huh. the thing with that is that All Might's confirmed that he's only ever been using 20% of his power at one time anyway. He's only ever used more of that when he's using a special attack. Um, That right there says that Deku isn't thinking too far ahead. And, um, and a lot of people, you made the argument that All Might isn't the best teacher. Well, All Might can't teach somebody who doesn't really ask him questions unless he's in a life-threatening situation. Um, All Might can't rectify a lot of what Deku has because All Might doesn't know at what stage Deku's at right now. I think he only just culminated all the steps that he was at recently. Um, Whether that's All Might's fault or Deku's fault, it remains to be seen. Um, But yeah, I mean, the whole him just learning how to kick thing I, I mean that's something that I really a lot of people joke about, but when you really think about it, it's like, really. Um, and the whole running thing, like All Might doesn't really. Well, actually, no, I can't say he doesn't really run. We see him. We we see him do a full on sprint during that tournament. I mean, during that little thing with Deku and Buckle were fighting against him. Yeah, All Might. All Might runs from. When he goes, he runs to the site where one for all. He runs from the. Well, you know, uh, he, he, he doesn't run. He jumped. When he, when he when he when he came in crashing down, he was he was flying. That man oh, jumped. Man. That man jumped. So God, when he, he, when he runs it. when he runs into all my, when he runs into one for all, he's coming out of the sky and punches him. Oh, very interesting. So All Might jumped, but I think we have seen him do a full-on sprint. I think the time he was running was when he was fighting Deku and Bakugo during that little that little like test they were having. That one, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure he was running because D- uh, Bakugo was f- was like flying with power, and um, Deku was like running normally. But um, yeah. well, actually, he was running using full cowling, so never mind. He wasn't really running normally, but um, yeah, he had full cowling when he was. Wait, did he have full calendar during that? 
Yeah, he had full cowling. Because he didn't learn he mm-hmm. didn't learn how to kick until after that. So yeah, he had full cowling at that point. Right. So I don't know. His ability this all started because we were talking about how I he said his ability is mostly just punching and kicking. Yeah. My point was it's punching and kicking. But this, I think, once you realize that your body can exert a tremendous force, like your pun- punching and kicking becomes like a really nice feature of an arsenal of many other abilities. I think what it is, I maybe un- I'm expecting an um, unrealistic a lot out of him right now. Even though I just said that, like a lot of probably what I want. Only comes to, from down to the fact that, like, um, in other shown in main characters, a lot, of, a lot of these abilities are only granted when the character reaches godhood. Um, even like, uh, like, because I mean, Alma is always in that state when he's in his full form. So it's like, you know, altering, altering the, uh, you know, whether is um something like. That is comes with the power, and a lot of times too, main characters don't really see where they're going to be able to become way ahead of um way way ahead of when they become that. Uh, mm-hmm. Goku's is it for example that he didn't know he was fully capable of when he was in Dragon Ball. He thought he was just a really a really pudgy kid with a tail. Um, that he thought everybody on that on that planet had, and he was just really <laughs> strong. Mm-hmm. He didn't learn. He was an alien until Dragon Ball Z came along. And then he started learning about transformations and whatnot. So he didn't know about transformations until Frieza came along. Uh, so, like, you know, Goku learned progressively as he saw certain things. Like, Deku saw exactly what he's supposed to be aiming for, but he's just now learning that he can throw a projectile air. Mm-hmm. So I think the progression is a little bit off. But also, I think what it is, is also that I'm comparing him to other characters in the show who had more time with their abilities than him. And I'm always keeping that in mind, but it's still frustrating. When you got, when you got characters like Bakugo, for instance, who is supposed to be his rival, and Bakugo has learned how to, like, make a, a, a armor-piercing shot. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, it's one of those things where, like, I'm, I'm so frustrated with his growth right now. But there's nothing more that I can do about it because that's where he is right now. He can't use a lot of his power because if he breaks himself, what? You mean Bakugo? Because Bakugo has a. I feel like he's gonna have a breakthrough when he when he when he grows. But Bakugo. Yeah. No, I was saying like I mean like I'm I'm comparing other characters like Bakugo who's gotten stronger. I mean Bakugo's just not learning how to do a projectile shot. Like Mm. he's. He's starting to do things with his quirk that he probably never thought he would do because a lot of the attacks were just covering large amounts of area. At some point, he's going to probably start learning how to do gunshots. But, um... I like saying, like, yeah, he will have a breakthrough when he finally f- breaks through that barrier that he's stuck behind right now. Uh, yeah. But, um... It's just, like, comparing that to the characters, you kind of forget that Deku is just now learning... And right now, all my single one knows this. Bakugo knows this now, and um, I think that's about it. Well, all for one knows this. So, so many characters that know this, and comparing to other characters, like you know, Deku's right now just a kid breaking his arms. He stopped doing that now, but you think after him not breaking his arms anymore, you think he would have progressed faster? Mm-hmm. Like you said before, like he should he should be knowing he should know how to fly through the air now, but. He only did that subconsciously uh, when he was powered up by Eerie. Which is kind of weird when you think about the two. Deku was flying about and he didn't he didn't question that at all. Like, why was he flying? It, it literally took All Might saying that you should have probably realized when you're fighting um, fighting Overhaul that you're flying with kicks in the air. Mm-hmm. So this is one of those things where, like, Deku was supposed to be smart and he's not acting like it. That's my that's my biggest problem. He's supposed to be he's supposed to be like leaps and bounds intelligent, but for whatever reason he's not acting like it. You know he's that's that's one of his characteristics. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. He's not being. What what happened? What? I have to agree with you. Like when push comes to shove, lately he's been relying on. 
on brute force. And I'm not saying he's a bad character. I'm just saying that, like, when you ask the question about is a good character progressing, mm-hmm. like, I, look, in my opinion, I think Dick was a good character, but he's lacking a portion of what I believe a good character is, which is getting better. Now, yeah. I will say, comparing him to Naruto, I think he's a totally bit better because at least dick has got more attacks. Naruto had mm-hmm. an issue that I only came to realize after the show ended, where he only had one attack that he just had different variations on. And that only irritated me after the fact. It didn't irritate me while it was going on, but it only irritated me after the fact. Um, so I'm going to become a little more critical with somebody, a main character, in their attacks in, in their attack repertoire. But then again, Goku has the same issue too, where he's only got like three attacks: the Spirit Bomb, the Kamehameha, and the Dragon Fist. Well, the Dragon Fist or the Spirit Bomb. You feel uh, like those are his only three attacks? Like special, like hard, hard hitting attacks. Yeah, um, he's the ones he actively uses. I mean, like, what is an attack that somebody else has? Huh? What's an attack that somebody else had that he could have had? Uh, I was about to say the spirit. I mean, I'm about to say this, like the, the struggle disc, but he did that once. Mm-hmm. Uh, special beam cannon. I feel like that wasn't something sp- particular to Piccolo. There's no real reason. The, there's no real reason to think. Com- hmm? It's just a Namekian Kamehameha, though. It's, it's just it, functionally, it's basically a Kamehameha. It's a beam attack. You know they made fun of the fact that Goku steals attacks. I'm just not realizing that 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 that, that wasn't that, that was a real like uh, realization. Mm-hmm. I I was laughing at it because I was thinking about the command. Things that he picks up are not attacks because they use their, their power mana, and like they're not going to make him like he's not going to learn magic. He's not going to learn mind attacks or something like that. He's going to use key, and what. His abilities after he learned how all the different attack came things like Kaioken, and Ultra Instinct, um, Instant Transmission, things like that. Like it moved him in the direction of not learning new obvious key attacks, but more learning like tactical things and power ups, you know, and, and, and things that boosted up his strength. I don't know if the power up situation is really him learning anything, they just kind of came out of nowhere. The only argument you can make is Super Saiyan three because he learned to do that in the afterlife, but even that I don't even know, I don't even know like the f- the full on like uh, parameters for that. The fusion technique. As before, the creator said that was a gag. That wasn't really meant to be doing anything because like the, that that as powerful as that was, it didn't it didn't do anything whenever it happened. Well, the only things that ever do anything is a command. To be fair, those are the two ways that the enemies die in this series. With a spirit bomb, I mean, Boo died of that. That's what I said, command man or spirit bomb. Oh, I heard it was if a command man. If you're only going to use moves to do something, as in like defeat an enemy, then it's those two. But like, boy, did the spirit bomb take Frieza down a peg. Um, you know, and, and things like that. And even, like, the Spirit Bomb, like, I mean, no, I'm just, like, Ultra Instinct helped him defeat Jiren, and that wasn't out of nowhere, because, like, they, they talked about Ultra Instinct for a really long time before they brought But no, it but it still came out of nowhere, because no one ever talked about how to get it. Goku literally it came out of nowhere. Yeah, they did, they did talked about it beforehand. I mean, they talked about the Super Saiyan transmission beforehand, and mm-hmm. that still came out of nowhere. Because, like, no one talked about how to achieve it. Whis was teaching Goku how to improve his fighting skills, and Whis was the one that was like had the ability to teach people how to use God Key. Like he was, Whis taught Goku the seeds he needed to get pushed over to Ultra Instinct in the fight. But it still came out of nowhere because Whis didn't teach him how to do it. It just it just showed up. He told him that it was possible. I'm sure. Yeah, Whis but he was using. He didn't tell him how to do it, though. All he did was tell him to stop thinking. And we saw how that worked out. 
I think Whis used Ultra Instinct the whole time they were fighting him. I think that's something he just uses as one of his abilities at all. Yeah, but well, um, all, all I'm really getting is the fact that like the Super Saiyan transformation, Super Saiyan two, Super Saiyan three. I mean, even like I mean, I, you can't you can make the argument that like you know he was taught how to do Super Saiyan um, Blue because he only learned to do that after he learned God Key. But still, it was mm-hmm. like for like for me, it's like the Super Saiyan came out of nowhere. There was really no there was really no way to like tell you that all you need to do is just get angry. You only learned that after the fact. Like it, that, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God was definitely taught, even if Blue came out of nowhere. No, I say I didn't think I didn't think Blue came out of nowhere because like he learned how to do that after he let God key. I mean, and then <laughs> Super Saiyan God that that was just like that was something that they learned from Shinron. But mm-hmm. um, but then there's Kaioken and his transmission, both really effective. Something that you can use in the fight. Yeah, but I don't know if that was a transformation. It was more of an attack. What? Was that really a transformation? I thought it was more of an attack. Which one? Kyle Ken. No, it's an, you're right. It's a power up. But that's what I'm saying is like, he didn't learn a lot of different direct attacks. Like, what other things is energy going to turn into to, besides a living ghost, which is really like not Goku's style? Like, Vegeta has the, the only self destruct attack. Which it just doesn't make sense for the main hero to do. He can learn the Galagun, the Final Flash. Galagun and Final Flash are both just basically beam attacks. They they don't do anything that Command May can't do. They're not. I just think like Goku has a limited amount of like mm-hmm. just basic key attacks. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just saying when I'm mm-hmm. compared to other characters, like at least Deku doesn't doesn't suffer that problem yet. Uh, I think it's just kind of repetitive that you know your main character is relying on like the same technique regardless of how much it works. I get the whole if it doesn't if it doesn't break don't fix it mentality, but at the same time it's like it really irked me in Naruto because at least in that show they had these things called ninjutsus and they were based off of, like the five elements. I think it's like mm-hmm. wa- fire, water, um, air, earth. Um, yeah. I don't know why Captain Planet is in my mind, but I'm gonna just ignore that thought. Uh, I think light. So they had all these elements and stuff like that, and each ninja ha- could have an affinity for three. The main character only found one affinity. Um, but the thing was, he only used one like attack throughout the entirety of the second half of the show, and yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was how he was killing people, but it was still irritating that this world had a, over a thousand techniques. And as long as you knew how to do it, you could do the technique. Like, he was only using one technique. And on top of that, he literally, at the end of the first half, went to train with a grand with a grand teacher to get stronger, only for him to come back just to know how to do that technique a little bit better. Yeah. So, it, like, that, that irritated me the most. I'm not saying what Deku's doing here is irritating me, and I, and I don't really, I'm not really saying Goku was irritating me. I mean, I guess Goku could learn the Hellzone Grenade. That would be a good attack. He could have picked up some of the many different attacks Roshi had. He could have... I guess there's stuff that Goku could have learned. I'm not really saying that 100% that it, Goku irritated me. No, no, he didn't. I like the freaking Kamehameha. That's iconic. But um, yeah. like when it came down to like, the other shows, I was like, I'm just like, why? They have mm-hmm. so much potential. But I felt like, other than the spirit bomb and the command mail for later, I felt like what they were really trying to get across was that Goku ones, like even like even like Solar Flare, for example, or multiple forms or after image, things like that. Like it seemed like most of the ability that he was picking up weren't direct attacks so much as things that made him trickier at fighting and more tactical at fighting. Well, Z and this was just mostly martial arts. They, they weren't really like fantasy fighting, at least not until like Z anyway. Because Goku mm-hmm. picked the flight from Tien. Um, mm-hmm. Again, another tactical move. I mean, if you if you limit Goku's abilities to his attacks, you're right. He has very limited attacks, honestly large number of tactical moves. Flight itself, like it's like we're taking it for granted, but that isn't. 
It's just kind of funny how, like, they introduce flight near the end of Dragon Ball, and all of a mm-hmm. sudden everybody can do it. <laughs> Z. Mm-hmm. Well, they all hang out. Mr. Roshi, like, refused to learn it, which is amusing, too. Well, that's because it, he is, it, that's, from his, that's a technique from his, um, his rival school, which kind of funny because your students know that technique, too. <laughs> Yeah, which he didn't have a problem with. I think he should just have used it. I think he said that he he couldn't learn it or something. Because I thought during Super, didn't they? I can't we're talking about Super here, but uh, like, I guess it, as we ending this off here. But didn't in Super, the, didn't he bring that up at some point about Master Roshi knowing how to fly? And he said something to the extent that he couldn't or something or he never learned it? He never learned it, yeah. I mean, he's, I think he certainly could have. If Videl could have learned it, Master Roshi could have learned it. I think Videl forgot. I don't think we've ever seen her fly in Super. Mm-mm. We also don't see her really need to fly in Super, but yeah, I do agree with I guess with that, I guess we run on rambling of several different animes on... Do we want to talk about her... Uh, what is her name? The... Uh, the Brava? Gentleman's- Bravo, do we want to talk about her ability? I mean, we kind of already said the love power up, but essentially, um, the way you described it was that she had to have a attraction or something, or a legitimate love for the person she's saying it to, and depending on mm-hmm. how much she loves that person, which is kind of funny that you said person versus just saying gentleman, but the person... She extends, she can give them a gigantic power up, which in the end gave Gentleman a Super Saiyan transformation. Is really what that was? Yeah. Like, it gave Gentleman a Super Saiyan transformation, and far enough, kind of, made, kind of made him more aggressive. She hit him with blood waves. I guess you could say that too, but like, it kind of made him more aggressive in, in some way, sort of form. I guess we also got confirmation that Gentleman does reciprocate her feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess another thing we talk about too. I guess before we end this over here, um, we have another Did one of you those. Feel like it was that weird love universe. Mm-hmm. Shit was going on here. What? Did you feel like this was sort of a weird like? You know that love universe from Dragon Ball Super. You mean the Sailor Moon thing? Yeah, was it Universe Three or something? I think there were two. Did you get any... What? I think there were Universe Two. They were. Did you get any Universe 2 vibe from where she was like, pretty power rap? No. Um, I was more focusing on her sad backstory in terms of like, I mean, I see sad quotation marks because it's more just like social awkwardness and, you know, Le Brava doing what any little kid does when, you know, people make fun of her. She shuts down. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, and, and it, it kind of makes you it kind of makes you feel sad for her at the end of it because, like, she's crying and having a breakdown because, you know, Gentle's the only person that accepted her. Um, I find it kind of funny that she says it that way, but from the little bit of backstory got on her, being objective, mm-hmm. she gave a boy that she liked a uh, um, a note of that she loved him, but apparently from her, that all of that, he gets to take take that she was just stalking him. She happened to be stalking him when she was saying all that stuff. Um, not saying that she deserved to have been berated like that, but at the same time, if you're going to be stalking somebody, I would think you should be prepared to hear whatever they're going to say because they're not going to know you're there. I mean, that's the definition yeah. of stalking. It still hurts. Yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. I- I'm just saying that it's like a, a lot of mad at them for saying it. She was just hurt. It's it just seemed yeah. more like. It just seemed like from all that, you know, I felt bad for her. I'm not going to say that I didn't. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was like, you think you'd be more prepared for that kind of thing. I mean, it almost seemed like it almost seemed like in her mind, it was like there was no way she he would reject her. To me, yeah. anyway, it seemed like there was like in her mind, there was no way she would reject him. Uh, he would reject her. And when she got rejected, she pretty much um, receded into her social awkwardness like anybody would. And just spent all her time at home letting her hair grow, not sleeping. Um, like, uh, that's important because it kind of adds to her character design, her, um, the black rings on her eyes. Uh, like, all this happened in the span of middle school and high school, too. Because <laughs> he's 22 right now. 
Um, yeah. she learned she learned how to hack. She even knew that was a criminal criminal activity, but she didn't care, um, because she was in love with this guy that she never met. Literally packed a bar of things on a whim, literally on a whim, and found him. Uh, and fell in love with him because he didn't reject her, and like on his end, on his backstory, like he was a um, he was a uh, failed um UA student. Yeah, UA student. Um, he realized he couldn't be a hero because he accidentally killed somebody. Well, not killed somebody. He almost killed somebody trying to save them. Uh, yeah. And pretty much his mother, his parents dis- disowned him. So, so I already got on that. You just see this image of his mother throwing everything in the kitchen at him. Uh, but um, and later on, after all that, he um, like years later, he ends up running into a hero that he knew in high school, and he's uh, and he's forgotten him. And his initial thought of that is to become a villain so people wouldn't forget his name. Which is another thing that like I felt bad for him because it's like it's that whole you leave high school, you know, you're doing your thing, then you see somebody from high school, and they don't remember who you are, and they're su- successful, and you're just like, hmm, man, what have I done with my life? Uh, most people try to better themselves. He decided to go to villainy. He even had a book in his closet. You think that was weird? I was guessing that the book had a. What? Repeat. Here, you cut off there. My guess was that the book said had more backstory than they told there. That like he had kept it around for a long time and like they ended about using it and finally he broke down one day and pulled it out and like found it came across it by chance or something like that and had it hanging around i'm more confused as to why a book like that exists like what publishing <laughs> agency like thinks it's going to make that book <laughs> you got a point there i was saying i was thinking about that i was like there's a book on how to be a villain <laughs> and it was in, and it was in your closet like, Buried underneath all your all all your high school stuff, where did you buy this? What store? What publication thought it was a good idea? Mm-hmm. Like how to be a villain one hundred and one. <laughs> I'm like, imagine being the villain that wrote that and then sent it to me. I want to meet the villain that wrote that book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I just want to shake his hand, saying you somehow became successful. Congratulations. <laughs> Cause you got this guy over here who was so desperate, so people didn't forget him that he bought your book <laughs> and used it, and actually almost became successful. But um, on that note, I want to bring up that um, you like to bring up comparisons and little small little details that they you think the creators are being are being snarky with, um. With the whole, after, like, the, when I was, you know, be, being as harsh on Lala as I was earlier, I will say it's kind of funny that, you know, Lala, no, La Brava, um, found a, a reason to live through Gentle, almost like how Deku found a reason to put Sean being a hero through All Might. It's another one of those, like, Gentle inspired somebody accidentally. That was never his intent, but he accidentally inspired somebody. And mm-hmm. going on with his name too, he literally sent Deku flying, trying to keep him away as his last wish to prevent La Brava from being put in jail. All the th- all the things that he did, granted, she's probably gonna still end up in jail, but we're gonna move on from that. Well, all the things that he's done, he was trying to protect her, regardless of what she was trying to do. He realized what she was going to do, and he thought all this through in his own mind to make sure that, you know, at least um, he might be able to protect her. Like, it, it was like, it was a really interesting concept for uh, our guy who was this desperate to become famous. They took the villainy <clears throat> after failing to be a hero only to um, be put in jail and have an accomplice. And he was even thinking about this all a long time ago. You know, you know, I don't want you becoming, you know, involved in this because you're gonna have a tainted background. But like, it was interesting how he was still thinking about her well being through all this. Like, there wasn't like one time throughout the entire situation he was thinking that she was some kind of scapegoat that he could use to get away. 
It's a very yeah. weird circumstance. Like he, you know, he true to his name, he was a gentleman. Interestingly enough. I thought it was interesting too because in so many ways, um, gentlemen represented the worst possible version of what Deku would turn out. Like, because you can't really think of Deku as turning out to be but you could think of Deku as turning out like someone that turned out to be a failure and someone who turned out to be ambitious, like beyond all like limits of their skill. You know, this guy's like much more ambitious than he is skilled. And even like this guy's narcissistic and you see Deku getting a little more proud now, you know, when he gets those like, um, you know, I fought a lot harder than you and he gets up or even like, you could almost say that it's, it's idealism possibly with a little bit of pride when he says, well, I'm going to like, you know, like when he says, I've seen the future and like you die in it. And he's like, well, I'm and then he has other moments like that where he just like stubbornly like ignores um, the limitations that are being put towards him and says, I'm just going to ignore that. Then I'm just going to go beyond it. If that's what I have to do. And you see this constantly in this series. and. Um, and Deku pays for it, so that almost like bravado, borderline, almost on arrogance. Like he could, he's not arrogant, but he's very close sometimes. And who's De- Deku or Jittle? Deku. Oh, okay. He he sometimes breaks the rules. He sometimes tries to break the rules of physics, like when he tried to break the rules, like of the future. He um. He's just so stubborn and pigheaded about things sometimes that like it's very, very close to arrogance. Except that we know that he's like a hopeless self-sacrificing idealist, but he he teeters on the edge of it. Like it would it wouldn't be an impossible character arc for him to go a little too far once and spill into arrogance. And here we have like someone that represents like all the stuff that he's trying not to be, you know, trying not to be a failure, trying not to be Arrogant, trying not to be ambitious above all. And, you know, all those things that threaten Deku's character if he was to if he was to not succeed in being a hero are embodied in this guy. Well, here's and, the thing. Um, I don't I don't know why and they might and he might go on this in the next episode. Mm-hmm. But um in the manga, um during this fight I think Deku does say that like this guy could have been me, you know. This could have this the way this guy's acting. This could have been me, you know. If all my yeah. hadn't intervened and stuff like that. So he does. Deku does say that Gentle could have been him. Now I'm yeah. saying this now, in the in the in the hope that it doesn't show up in this episode, but if it does. Sorry, but um, this does get talked about in the in the manga, and I don't know how much if they cut out for time or something like that. I don't know what happened, but um. But that, I guess that the whole like Deku acting arrogant, um, there's something that you and me skipped over, and I guess we didn't we just didn't realize it because we didn't talk about it a little bit, or we actually just didn't hear it. But during this fight with Bakugo, ba- Deku does say that um, whenever like whenever he's fighting somebody really strong, he envisions you know Bakugo is who he envisions. You know he is like essentially like in certain circumstances he'll replace All Might with Bakugo, and he says he ends up sometimes he ends up staying acting like Bakugo in some situations. In in a real mm-hmm. in a real sense, that whole I fought better than you was probably Deku psyching himself up, trying to act like Bakugo because that's who he, that's whenever he envisions a win, he envisions being Bakugo. So um, it's one of those small things. I remember like I was watching other people react to stuff, and they bring that up too. That you know, but Deku does things that he normally wouldn't do at a character because he's thinking about Bakugo in his mind. Yeah. Whether that being a homosexual love thing, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> We know he's in the girls, so I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of other things too that I just going into UA at the position he was in, you know, and trying to become when he doesn't have a quirk. He has a lot of moments where he's really like going against the impossible, and sometimes it feels more luck like than virtue that gets him through those moments. You know, like when he attacks a slime monster, there's no reason to believe that. Random hero is going to show up and save him, but they do. Uh, when he goes to Yurei and he decides he's going to try to be a hero, even though 
he has no quirk. Like, there's nothing saying that someone's going to magically show up and give him, you know, the greatest superpower of all time, but they do. And there's a lot of moments like that um, where if things had gone just a little bit differently, if he hadn't been, if, if he hadn't had such a charmed life, he could have maybe ended up something like a gentleman who's kind of his worst nightmare. So it was interesting. There was a line in there that really threw me off. And I was trying to find it while you were doing your last narrative, but like he says something about like, you were right. You're the toughest enemy I ever fought. And I wonder if that's the writer's little nod to the fact that he's fighting someone that's extremely similar to him because he does also mention that he's, um, he's fought stronger people, but then there isn't a moment later on when he does say that, you know, and if he said, if you, you must have seen my yearning for a dream. They go back and forth about that, like about how similar they are when they're fighting, like that banter. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think Deku that's is that thing. Guy fought, it, if he's saying that's the toughest guy he's ever fought, I don't think it's because of his power. I think it's because of he's the toughest guy he's fought on a psychological level. He's in a lot of ways well, he was I mean, fighting himself. Um, amongst, and spheres when I mean, amongst him. people he's fought. Gentle is the trickiest. You even even mentioned that earlier on. You didn't you didn't expect mm -hmm. him to be so like a adept at like using his power in the first place. Um, so like overhaul yeah. is pretty tricky. I don't know. Overhaul is tricky. If anything, he seemed more like uh, brute force. If anything, like um, Lemillion was tricky, and he he's fought. He went up against Lemillion. With all the students of UA, but Deku never fought. No, I take that back. I was gonna say Deku never fought Mariel, but no, he did. No, yeah, he did. That wasn't really a fight. It was more of a beatdown. But I mean, points still taken. Mm. Points still taken. Um, but I mean, as a villain, like he was probably the trickiest. Well, villain in quotation marks. Uh, I say more of an antagonist, but um, like in terms of people like on the opposite side of where he is, Gentle was probably the trickiest because um, Gentle wasn't trying to fight and win. He was trying to escape. And I think that's like Deku was also taking that into account, which is like why when he was fighting Gentle, he was ke keeping in account when he said that I got to keep in mind where those membranes are so I can use them against him. Um, beforehand, he wasn't really using that because he, he wasn't expecting to be th throated so easily just by bouncing membranes. Um, mm. I think he even stated sometime earlier that he didn't think that he could just make the air rubbery, but he did. So, um, I think it is to play into the whole Deku being arrogant thing or borderlining arrogancy, arrogance is that like he comes into a lot of these fights sometimes with the idea that he's just going to straight up win, um, because he's, he's either, you know, thought about, thought about something 10 times ahead or something, but then somebody like the villain throws a curveball at him and he's on he is, he's unexpected. Mm. Like ever since he got like uh full cowling under control, he started becoming a little more arrogant in that regard too. Like he's like, I got mobility on this person. They shouldn't be able to stop. <laughs> and mm. he gets like he, he ends up getting pancakes. Even with the whole like, <laughs> even with the whole like uh glove thing, he uh he I don't think he was expecting to have so much trouble turn a fire at him, but he did. Yeah, I think almost every one of Deku's where if there hadn't been something fairly lucky or an unexpected factor intervening in his he um he would have been in big trouble but i think that's what makes the main character main character sometimes though is that they get real lucky all the time mm -hmm. i mean like like he got unexpected help in his fight with stain he um when he was fighting uh i don't know if it was unexpected because he made the he made the call granted I will, I will make the argument. Just because he sent out the distress signal doesn't mean someone I was going to come to his aid immediately. I will make that argument. Mm. But he's still like, that one was more of like, like he sent out the distress signal Being smart. hoping, yeah. you know, like versus something like all my friends. And like, that was luck that he even met all my on that roof. That was even was more luck. So luck that he had the right blood type or something. Hmm? Oh, yeah, well, that was just, yeah, that was just straight up. That wasn't luck. That was just more the make, like, more the writer. Like he just did that on purpose. Yeah, but that <laughs> he was had a to bit luck that he had the blood type he needed. Um, when he fought uh, muscular, 
like the fact that the guy intervened at the last. Yeah, the point well, change in the character. Well, that is true because Deku gave up until like the water hit muscular and muscular let go just long enough mm-hmm. that he could charge up his fist to, to punch him. Yeah. But I mean, you get, I mean, like you can make the argument for a lot of main characters from any show. I mean, look at Goku for instance. Like, the, like Goku's gotten real lucky a lot. Like during during Dragon Ball, he um the first like when he first encountered Pilaf and Pilaf had you know um put them in a cage and on the ground with the with the um with the window up there that they could see outside. Mm-hmm. Like. Goku got real lucky that he didn't know one about the transformation into the monkey. Um, and two, like it was just convenient that he didn't know he was going to kill his grandfather, so he could easily go on being like, stupefied that he somehow got out. He got real lucky that uh, when he did kill his grandfather, or well, the guy who saved him, that uh, he was able. Like, he got real lucky that when he came out of the sky into the pot, he could have been left there forever and grown up and turned evil, but he got lucky that Grandpa Gohan found him. And he got lucky um, that, like, Boma found him out of nowhere so he can go on an adventure to find these Dragon Balls. He got real lucky, just like, like, Goku got, like, Goku ran into some stupid, ridiculous people throughout his journey that you wouldn't think would be possible considering how big the world is. Somehow he ran into Boma. Just because she was out there looking for Dragon Balls that didn't know if she she didn't know if it even existed, uh, he ran in he ran into Yamcha in Poir. He ran into Oolong. He ran in, like all these characters don't make any sense in terms of the grand scheme of like how the world works and how somebody like Goku would have run into this many people in his life. Got lucky finally he was an alien. He even got lucky during his fight with Frieza. If if Frieza hadn't killed, I mean that's I wouldn't say go, Krillin dying was luck. But at the same time, if Frieza hadn't killed Krillin, Goku went with Super Saiyan. Yeah. Well, actually, we correct that. If he hadn't almost killed Piccolo and actually killed Krillin, he wouldn't have gone Super Saiyan. Yeah. So, like, like I mean, I, I think luck is just part of the main character trope. That th- things just happen for a reason. Um, It depends on the anime, though. Like, uh, Bash the Stampede, who... I thought it was very, very insightful of you to compare uh, Deku to Vash. I think um, Vash doesn't have any luck at all, for the most part. Well, isn't like a lot of the reason like why Vash didn't have a lot of, a, a good luck is because of half the stuff that like, he was involved in was kind of his fault. And every now and then, he got l- lucky that it was he wasn't the main reason or main cause of it. Like I mean. Um, the only time I would say that he probably wasn't a hundred percent at fault was the you know the death of that girl that he liked. Um, I think he was an I indirect don't think it was cause. His fault. I don't think anything that happened was his fault. I think it was all knives torturing him with like trying to force him into a sin. In fact, like I think he has that one episode called Sin where he does the one bad series when he kills. Um, Legato, I think it was. The Legato finally puts him into a situation where he has to do what he feels because he's got two wrong things to choose between. Someone's going to die either way, and it's up to him what to pick which one. So he decides to kill Legato, who's practically begging him to kill him anyway, um, to save the the insurance girls. But... That's the only time he he breaks his code. Other than that, like when, right up to the fact that he spares knives is like, like Vash was an innocent except for that one moment, and that one definitely a gray area and not necessarily a stain. But I would say Vash, like, I mean, it's a lot of it's connected to his past, but that's just building on the torment that's been brought upon him by knives. Even when he like, even when the city blows up by his hand, it's forcing him to do it. He's fighting as hard as he possibly can not to do it. Well, I mean, can, can you just say that it's a lot to do with his, na- his naivete, even with his brother? Because that guy was like an evil, conniving, just like 
there was nothing good about him, if if anything. So if anything, you can make the argument that Knives is what Vashford became if it wasn't for that girl that he fell in love with. Yeah. He didn't fall in love with a girl. That was his... Uh... No, that girl, from what I can tell, Vash was in love with that girl that ended up dying earlier. Yes, she would, She may have been his caretaker, but mm-hmm. like... Huh? No, he idolizes her, and it's as, as, as a moral compass, but he's he loves her as a mother figure or as a teacher figure, but he doesn't love her romantically. That's Isn't not what I got like, from that. That is not what I... No, uh, you're, just, you're, you're projecting then, because there's nothing in that feeling for her. Ever, he sees her as like sort of like a Christ-like figure. I don't know. I didn't really get that. It wasn't me projecting either. I was like looking at that, and like I've seen relationships like that before in anime. Granted, it didn't progress to anything romantic, but I still felt like it, it was like there was some of it. Some of it was there, you know. Yeah, he might have been young, but considering that he wasn't really human, um. Age didn't really matter in that situation. Also, he wasn't human, so like, like her being human didn't really matter all that much. Yeah, he may have idolized her, but at the same time, I still feel like, given given the right circumstance, he probably would have fell in love with her. I think that's extremely up for debate. I believe if any if the right circumstances prevent them, present themselves, I'm pretty sure. Granted, he hasn't shown. I'm he hasn't sure really. In the opposite direction, though, dude. Hmm? I'm pretty sure in the opposite direction. I and mean, we'll never know because they'll never. I mean, they never progressed there. But I'm just sitting there saying because, like, I didn't see any of it between the other two girls he was with. I get to say the closest thing, like I would say, closest thing to the to that romantically is her. But I mean, he wasn't a hundred percent showing that. But I still felt like given enough time. <laughs> He's and in it, love with Meryl. No, I didn't see any of that. Meryl was in love with him, though. No, that was a different story. No, he was definitely in love with Meryl. No, I didn't see any of that. I, I really didn't. Dude, you gotta watch the series again. You're out of your mind at this point. You're, like, way off. Like, I can't even... I knew that I she mean, was infatuated with him, but I don't even really think he reciprocated all that. I mean, yeah, he cared when she got hurt and stuff like that. But like he, he didn't was... want her to get involved. He loved her, but he didn't want her to get involved because um, he knew that everything around him that he cared about was just upon her. Tremendously deep feelings for her. I don't remember them sharing a kiss at all. He killed Legato to spare her. That could have been a just deep commitment. That didn't have to be because he loved her. We should do a review of Trigun sometime. And do- well, that's another you know, anime characters like in like other shows like like it was just there. It was like just smacking you in the face. Now if it wasn't smacking me in the face, I gotta get Trigun like, an A plus on that one. But uh, I want to watch. I would rather watch that series again with you than Reader. Talk about. Even though you haven't seen Reader Die yet, I mean, I feel like I'm not to talk about with Dragon. Sorry, I'm listening to you. I just like I'm counting up something. I've been keeping track of. It hasn't been, it hasn't been to do with this. It's just something else I was doing. You're counting my lies. But uh, going try going tangent. I don't know where that where that came from. Don't worry about it. So I think we can mostly wrap this up. Um, was there anything left? I mean, I did like that he was fighting for something good, but that's more like, old, you know what I mean? That he believed in everything he was doing, and it really helped drive home a uh, concert and everything meant to them. But I think that just brings it back to Bakugo fighting for a good cause sacrifice himself the only thing other thing i'd bring up here is like moral and morally ambiguous moment at the end that you already punching on him and saying like how much they love each other and gentle criminal like doing the selfish selfish thing to like 
himself in so that Labrava is protected and everything. And Bakugo having like a little more. These two really love each other and I'm about to ruin their lives and they're not all that bad. And like you see Bakugo sort of have like a little dilemma about it. The show Bakugo. sort of bails him out. What episode sorry, are you watching? Midoriya, 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 Midoriya. Midoriya has like sort of like a morally ambiguous moment where he could have made the choice about whether or not he was actually going to um, let them go or not. Like you start wondering that. Like you he's really in love, crushing. They really have something here that's special to them. And you see Midoriya feeling kind of conflicted about that. And then all they just like the writers just literally throw him out of the episode. The guy goes, Whoa, or something like that. And you see Midoriya go flying off into the distance. And then Midori is just out of the episode and he turns himself in on his own terms when maybe he could have gotten away at that point or something like that. It's just this sort of bailout ending in my opinion. As much as I love the episode, that ending like where he just bucked Bakugo, I mean, I keep saying Bakugo, where he just bucked Midori off into nowhere and then stood up and, def- and, and surrendered when maybe he could have gotten away was really strange to me. No, it really wasn't strange with the circumstances that they had in there. Like, um, they said that they even made they made they they were constantly talking about how they only ever used Labrava's power to get away. They couldn't have gotten away, considering how crazy Wild Dog is. Um, like they probably would have ran, but they probably got caught because he would have had their scent. He doesn't have to run. He just can jump through the sky. I don't think he still could have gotten away because Wild Dog could still have their scent. So I think, in, I guess, in the long run, Val, 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 Val. He's, deal, though. he's way faster than that guy. He can go, he, like, he can jump on things that will eventually. Yeah, but we, there was like, I mean, this is this, was there ever like a like was there a time limit on how long Wild Dog can smell somebody? <laughs> well, either way, he doesn't even try. Like, he breaks Spock go off of him. He's completely... his specialty is escape. And he's fairly, fairly experienced, you know what I mean? But he doesn't even... I give up. Which seems like... It, just, it seems sort of an abrupt ending. I was just like, oh, this is what happened. But especially how Bakugo just... I'm sorry, especially the way that Midoriya just gets flipped off out of the episode. Goes, ah! And that's it, and we don't see Midoriya anymore. And that, like, really struck me as a little bit of a cop-out. Uh, because they bailed him out of making that more decision of do I arrest these people and choose the law as my top authority embrace the fact that he hasn't really I haven't actually seen him do a crime I just stopped him from trying and the crime was sort of a misdemeanor even if it was shitty and I, I, I wanted to know if, if you, Midori was going to let him go when he saw how much he loved him and how selfish he was being or how selfish he was being I I wanted to see if Midoriya was going to be like, I wonder if I can to redeem themselves somehow. But then they just kind of like bail them out, and I didn't get to see what would have happened. Well, here's the thing. I don't think this is going to be the last we see a gentle. Um, I don't yeah, have any real. I don't have any real. I don't have any real um evidence towards that fact. But um, well, uh, we we should say that um. This show is going to start making good on certain characters coming back soon. Because uh, mm-hmm. there is somebody that has come back um, at some point. But uh, I, I will say that I don't think that we've seen the last of this guy. And with the way that he ended it, with the way he had, apparently he had a morality check. Um, All of a sudden at the end of it, granted that he always had the morality check because he didn't want to get her involved in the first place. And a lot of that too... A lot. I, you you want to say that he didn't even try to run, like he he definitely went through all that in his mind, saying that like what Labrava had been happy about running away or something like that. I don't think I think I think at the end of the day he realized that if he ran, Labrava was gonna probably try to do something even crazier. Because I think he even brought it too was like if if she hadn't found him, what she what if she would have done anyway? Like he I think he was afraid that she was gonna do something crazy. Yeah. So in a real way, he was gonna put himself into jail so that way she didn't have to. Which was really cool. 
So like, in, in, a, in a real situation, I don't think... I think he chose not to run because all the extra outcomes didn't seem like it was worth it. Yeah. Although I don't get how, like, she's not going to jail. Like, she's right with her computer that shows all the software to hack into their system. Yeah, I, I mean, I just think, for, like, it, it seems like he's thinking that maybe she will get, get put in jail on something a little bit less than him. He probably confessed to... He probably confessed to everything. In the terms of Watchdog, like, I guess she's not going to jail because she's not in any of those YouTube. But she does have evidence right with her. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're gonna. She's gonna probably go to jail forever. I mean, if she does go to jail, she'll probably go to juvie. Well, not juvie because she's too old for that. But um, she'll probably go to jail for maybe a year. I think he was afraid that if she was caught with him, she'd serve much, much more of a longer sentence. But it didn't really matter because she already made it quite evident that she was so infatuated with him that she didn't matter where, you know, where she was going to be as long as she was with him. But then again, this is another thing too. I'm not sure how the jail system works in this world, but for us like ours in the real world, she'd be in a separate jail for women. Mm-hmm. So not that the gentle was thinking about that, but it's one of those situations too that at the end of the day, if they if she doesn't get put in jail, which is you know it'd be a good thing for her, then she could at least try to work out all this like uh all this self hate that she's got because that's essentially as we end this off here it's essentially <clears throat> what led her to gentle in the first place uh she uh after get to get rejected she literally locked herself in her own room by herself um don't know where her parents were that she was able to do this for so long periods of time but um doesn't really matter because like her like the character the, the character that we saw of her was a it's something funny too. They didn't try redeeming her at all. They just showed you what she was, what she was like before Gentle showed up. Like they showed her, mm-hmm. they showed you all the things she did and stuff like that. But they didn't try redeeming her. They didn't, they didn't even really try to redeem Gentle all that much. They just showed you what he was like beforehand, and showed that he didn't really need to be redeemed because he still kept a lot of his basic principles. As far as we can tell, he didn't really hurt anybody. He didn't kill anybody. If anything, he was trying to be a bad guy, trying to expose all the bad guys. Yeah. So it was like, I guess it was in the rest of the, like gentle didn't need to be redeemed, and neither did the girl. We did. We just saw a little. We just saw a, a a young woman who like lost like all hope to live, and then found some guy online that made her smile. It's like with any YouTuber in real life too. It was like most YouTubers get comments saying that you know you inspire me to you know I was I was feeling really bad, and you inspired me to you know pick up the pieces and move on. In her circumstance, she put the pieces up and then moved on to Gentle, and that's where she stuck. Learned how to hack. Well, actually, she probably knew how to hack to begin with, but uh, learned how like learned all this stuff just to help him out. All right. So, if anything, it was two broken people finding each other. It was a really sad way to think about it. I guess we're gonna end up on that note: two broken people finding each other. Nice. If you've got one more episode, maybe two, I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed. Still um, a better love story than Twilight. We're going to end off on that one. I'm not going to touch that with 10-foot pole. We're just going to let that be known. Twilight sucks. <laughs> See you guys.